So the new thing we've announced this year at NIB is the 502 monitor and the SideFinder EVF attachment, which is this right here. Uh, they're two separate products, the 502 monitor, and then you can, if you want to, buy it as a viewfinder, the SideFinder. And, you know, basically, you take the monitor and you can attach it like this, and then you have a, a full high-resolution EVF. It's actually the highest, highest resolution EVF on the market right now. And you can actually, once it's mounted, you'd either mount it by this bracket here, or maybe by a quarter 20, but once you've mounted it and you're using it in EVF mode, you can pop it open and use it as a 1080p monitor as well. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, so you end up with like a multifaceted full 1080p monitor and highest resolution EVF, all for the price, or less than most standard EVFs. Uh, so as far as the actual monitor itself, it's full 1080p, 1500 to one contrast ratio. 400 nits of brightness. Uh, with the user interface, a lot of people that we've talked to, you know, are going the way of touchscreen, but they're not really loving it because of the fingerprints. You know, people call them smudge magnets, fingerprint print, print, print magnets, stuttering, um, things like that. Well, so we tried to emulate a touchscreen experience without actually putting a touchscreen on the monitor. So we've done that with this joystick and the back button. So basically, when you're using a touchscreen on your phone, things like that, Normally, what you'll do is you'll swipe left and right. That's the most common thing, is swiping between pages and then pushing and clicking, right? So with the joystick, we get that functionality. We can swipe left and right to change our pages, and then we can click the joystick to get into something. So we've tried to really emulate the touchscreen experience without actually smudging up your monitor. So when you get it out of the box, it'll have several pages pre-set up. You'll have things like an exposure page, which would have your histogram and your zebras, things like that. You'd have a focus page, which would have focus assist, maybe uh, peaking, things like that. And you'd also have a maybe an aspect page, where you can do a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, a crosshair, cross hatch, things like that. The idea being that you get the monitor, you set up all your pages with your favorite tools, and then you just swipe left and right on the set. The idea we always try to strive for is kind of making it so the shooter doesn't have to stress and go into menus and worry when they're actually shooting and if there's people waiting on you, things like that, and they can actually just get in and out and learn everything they need to do pretty much instantly without getting lost in menus. Uh, and we feel like a lot, of, a lot of times products end up being a bigger hassle than they're worth. So for us, interface is a big, a big deal. Now this 1080p screen, once I attach the viewfinder, it actually remaps so that it can fit the, uh, the viewfinder's loop. And the reason we do that is because if you actually had a 1080p 5-inch screen like this and um, actually put a loop on it, the loop would be enormous. It would be very large. So it actually remaps and fills this extra screen area with important information. You can get battery information, you can get uh, resolution, histogram, yeah, things like that. And you can actually select what's gonna show up there so that you're not wasting that screen space. But you're still getting, when you look through the loop, the highest resolution EVF. It's, uh, it's higher than 720p as far as resolution goes. Now, since it's got the button and the joystick right here, when you're using it, you can still access it and swipe your pages. That's one of the reasons the interface is so simple. So you can actually swipe pages like that. But we also didn't want you to feel like you had to do it that way. So we're including a, a wireless remote control. Right here we have a remote control mounting bracket. And it actually goes down like this and locks in. You pop in the remote control, which I don't have any with me right now. But then what you'd be able to do is you'd be able to hit the joystick on the remote while you're looking through here. So you're kind of holding it like that and controlling it like this. That way you're not having to reach in here and you have a, another third point of contact basically. Then another thing about the wireless remote, of course, you can pop it out, mount it to your handles, to your rig, anywhere you want. And you don't actually have to be hands-on with the viewfinder to control it. And it has the same buttons as the remote, or as the uh, monitor, the back button, the joystick, and the power button, and the capture button. And the capture button captures still shots and you can overlay those on your image to line up for composure and all that stuff. Composition, sorry. Um, and that all saves to the SD card slot. The SD card slot can also be used for 3D lookup tables, which you can uh, display in real time. Uh, the monitor has HDMI in and out, SDI in and out, and uses two LP6 batteries. And also the signals can cross convert, so you can go in SDI and out HDMI, oh, or in nice. HDMI or out SDI. Uh, on the bottom here we have a headphone port, 
so you can actually listen to your your uh, live footage and you get a USB port firmware upgrades things like that that's pretty much the overview I guess the one other thing that I'll mention is the adjustable diopter here uh, it goes from negative 2 to plus 4 so a lot of folks who have been able to come put their eye up on it they can actually take off their glasses adjust the diopter and still see it crystal clear so you don't have to have your glasses pushing up against the eye cup and hurting your face so people seem to really like that as well but that's that's basic overview of the, the 502 monitor and the side finder uh, EDF yeah, attachment. What's it, what's it cost? The, to get and the whole EVF is $1,500, $1,499, and we're planning on shipping the EVF in summer. Right now, we're already shipping the monitor itself, and it is $1,199. So you could go ahead and get the monitor for $1,199 now and add on the attachment for the additional $300. Okay, now I'm going to ask the, the, the obvious $64 question. Okay. How long before people are doing all of that with this? With the phone? Yeah. Okay. Um, and you see where I'm going? Because that is like, that's the size of an iPhone. Yes. So the first thing I think of is, is you, know, you know, a lot of times I report yeah. on what mobile filmmakers are doing with their iPhones. Right. You know, when you've got like everything from, you know, Red has a has a balancing app so you can balance your iPhone. You can, you know, there's a lot of a lot of apps out there that mimic stuff like this. Yeah. So, so, and I do know there are apps out there that allow you to turn an old Android phone into a, into a, yes. a kind of a monitor. It's rudimentary. Yeah. You guys still have the lead and I'm with you on that. Yeah. But yeah, my, I mean, question really is, the question is, my question will, is, is when will that happen? I mean, and, it can happen at it? any time. Um, the, the question I always kind of counter with is when will a professional want to be doing that? Because right now, like you said, all the solutions to get the signal from the camera to the monitor are rudimentary, the frame delay is severe, yeah. the connectivity is shaky, right? You're using like a lightning port cable and it just falls out of your iPhone. You know, this stuff, you, you kind of want to be able to see it and have it be reliable. That's why things like a BNC or an HDMI, you know, they're solid. It's gorgeously yeah. compact. It the, really is. The problem, it's, it's... It, the problem with using like a phone is just there's not really, like it, basically my counter would be here's an SDI cable, here's a camera, make it work. Right. It's the, the tech's not there yet. It will probably happen. I just don't know when. It could right. be five years. Could be two years. I, I just don't know. As far as this, like I just figured. I just it, be, yeah. I, and the only reason why I asked yeah. that is because it's very smartphone like. Oh yeah. It's yeah. compact. Well, it's it. But to be honest, that's you know. That's what that, draw, That's what made me want to ask the question. The the fact and we've heard it a lot, honestly. And the fact of the matter is, we've had people, a couple people, not a lot, come into our booth and be like, "Oh, does it only work for the iPhone 6? Oh. And we're like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> they think this is, but you know, it's, I, it's the same reason I still have a Garmin in my car, because yes, I can use my phone as a GPS, but it's not quite as good. Yeah, you don't you know? know that. You don't know that until you've been follow. You yeah. follow Apple Maps, and you end up yeah. in a dead end. Right, and like my Garmin, it sits in my car. It's there. It's reliable. I love it. Whereas my phone, it's like, oh crap, the battery's dead, and I'm lost. You yeah. know, it doesn't plug into my cigarette lighter. So, I feel like there's always a place for a specific tool that does its job perfectly. And, That's a good you line. Know, I like that. I, I'm gonna write. I'm gonna use that. <laughs> I, I mean, I honestly believe that, and I, I might be old-fashioned. The same reason I didn't get a GPS built into my car, because in eight years that GPS is gonna be an eight-year-old crappy GPS, and I can go get a nice brand new one. Yeah. You know, and it's just for me, I like. I personally think there's value in a dedicated device. You know? Great.